I can trace my mother's side back beyond 1790 with documentation. In the early to mid 20th century, the African American experience in Delaware was much different than it is today. A border state during the Civil War, Delaware remained in the Union, but with Confederate sympathies and continued to practice slavery. Finally ratifying the 13th Amendment in 1901, Delaware remained openly segregated well into the 1950s. Racist practices varied across the state, creating different life experiences for African Americans, depending on where they lived. With over 200 years of family history on Delmarva, Reba Ross Hollingsworth grew up aware and proud of her Southern Delaware roots. I was born in Milford, Delaware, delivered by my grandmother, my father's mother who was a midwife at the time, uh, and also because you couldn't really be born in Milford Hospital if you happened to be of my shade and hue. My dad was one of 17 children. My father's people were slaves, had come from the area of Dorchester County and Caroline County, Maryland. Uh, my mother, on the other hand, was an only child. Her name was Rachel Ann Shockley. Uh, her mother was a Scot, and the Scots were all free. We called where we live North Milford. The white people referred to it as Jimtown. That started at Third Street and went all the way out to uh, Route 113. It went from North Street over to Truett Avenue. So that area, that was where most of the blacks lived. The school was there, the churches were there, and that's where all the activities were. We grew up in a three-room house, not three bedrooms, three rooms. No running water, there was a pump, community pump, and we had um, wood stoves that we cooked with. Uh, my dad would kill hogs Thanksgiving week and would hang the sausage and ham and so forth in the attic. We were poor, but we were never without the necessities. We were always had food. We never ate dinner until dad came home from work. My dad, we used to call him a handyman because he would do almost anything. He had a wood yard when we were kids. He saw the wood for uh, heating and for cooking, because most people at that time actually burned wood. Even when we were kids, before we even started the school, my dad and mother had already taught us to read, write, and count. We had to count 100 forward and from 100 to 1 backwards. My mother was a fanatic on English, so we couldn't hang prepositions on the ends of our sentences. Went to Sunday school and church, and you played. Of course, I was the second oldest in my family, so I didn't do very much playing because I had to help take care of younger brothers and sisters. My dad actually told us, if you can't find a job, make a job. So you don't have to be beholden to people. So all seven of us kids had our own businesses and our own ways of making money. My sister and I used to sell berries, and blackberries and huckleberries, and we were, would go through the streets on our way home to sell these berries at 10 cents a quart. We stopped at one house and this woman told us she wanted some berries, but come around to the back door. Well, my sister and I looked at each other. We knew we were not going to the back door to sell our berries because everybody else was buying from the front door. So that was, I guess, our very first experience, but we didn't call it segregation. We figured this woman was a little bit weird or something, so she was the one who lost out because she didn't get any berries. It was segregated half integrated, I guess, when you're talking about having to use the services of each other. My mother and dad had a, a little running bill at the Cleaver store, which was on 2nd Street, and dad would pay the bill at the end of the week. Uh, and that happened until 1954 when Bryant Bowles came to town, and the Cleavers had let Bryant Bowles and the KKK and the National Association for the Advancement of White People use his truck as, and they came through the streets with their bullhorn protesting the integration of the segregated white school. So my mother and I went down to Cleaver's store and closed out the bill and said we'll never be back here anymore. We refused to spend our money where we knew we were not wanted. As we were growing up, my dad used to tell us that folks were as good as the people. He said you cannot bend over and 
kiss your own self in the rear, so don't bend over and kiss anybody else. Just look everybody in the face and hold your head up and carry yourself like you're a citizen. So that's what we did.